In the spring of 1942, the RAF unleashed its newest bomber, the Avro Lancaster, on a daring mission deep into Germany. To succeed would require its air crews to display incredible airmanship, courage, determination and skill. The mission? Destroy the U-boat engine plant in Augsburg. Codename Operation Margin. By early 1942, Bomber Command had been attacking German industry for two years. These raids were carried out at night and had so far produced little in the way of results. The losses had been dreadful and the costs extremely high both in terms of aircraft and air crews. RAF Bomber Command had a new commander-in-chief, Arthur Harris, who had assumed command at a time of extremely high strain and low morale amongst his crews. Due to the ineffective nature of nighttime bombing raids across Germany, pressure was being applied to Harris to help the Royal Navy in their battle against U-boats in the Atlantic, something Harris was reluctant to agree to. Instead, he was arguing that an attack on the U-boats at their bases and manufacturing facilities would be a much better use of his assets and show the true capabilities of his air crews and their aircraft. He also believed that this would highlight his commitment to the anti-U-boat campaign. One such facility was the Maschinenfabrik Augsburg Nürnberg U-boat engine factory in Augsburg, southern Germany. It was thought to be producing half of all U-boat engines, and so destroying this plant would severely disrupt Germany's U-boat production. The problem presented to Harris, however, was that it was a relatively small target and in a geographically protected location. Bomber Command's accuracy had not been great up to this point, and so to succeed, accuracy would need to be greatly improved. As if this was not enough of a challenge, due to the target location being in southern Germany on the outskirts of Bavaria, to reach it, the crews must fly almost 600 miles over enemy territory. But unbeknown to the Germans, however, the RAF had a new heavy bomber, the Avro Lancaster. 44 Squadron, based at RAF Waddington, had been working with the Lancaster prototype since September of 1941, and to help the crews with familiarity, it had been used on mine laying missions, and prior to the Augsburg mission, had only been used on one high altitude nighttime bombing raid over the German city of Essen on the 10th of March 1942. This meant that the Lancaster was practically unknown to the Germans, and therefore ideal for this mission. To help improve accuracy, the raid was to be carried out in daylight, and to offer protection to the aircraft, as well as hopefully achieving surprise by avoiding radar, it was flown at low altitude. Training for the mission took the form of seven Lancasters from number 44 squadron, and seven from number 97 squadron at RAF Woodhall Spa. They undertook long, low-level flights around Britain, making simulated attacks on Inverness in Scotland. The nature of these training sorties led many of the crews to speculate that they were training for attacks on the German naval base at Kiel. To defend German territory, the Luftwaffe had fighter bases in northern France, Belgium and Germany, and as RAF fighters could only escort the bombers for the first 200 miles, they would be sitting ducks beyond that. A plan was therefore drawn up for a large diversionary tactic. In order for the Lancasters to evade the German fighters, Fighter Command put on a large circus operation. Circus operations had the purpose of drawing enemy fighters into combat, and this one comprised of 30 Douglas Boston medium bombers from 88 Squadron and 107 Squadron, along with a heavy fighter escort. One group of aircraft attacked the ports in Cherbourg, while the other attacked a shipyard in Rouen. This circus operation had the effect of diverting German fighter aircraft away from the intended entry points for the Lancasters, allowing them to slip unnoticed at low level into France. 44 Squadron was the senior Lancaster Squadron, having received the prototype in September of 1941, and in command of the raid was South African Squadron Leader John Nettleton. He was an experienced pilot, nearing the end of his first tour. A 97 Squadron would be led by Squadron Leader John Sherwood. Each squadron provided six aircraft and split into two flights of three aircraft. They were each armed with four 1,000 pound high explosive bombs, which were to be released just above rooftop height, approximately 50 feet. On the 17th of April 1942, at RAF Waddington, Squadron Leader Nettleton and his crews of 44 Squadron boarded their Lancaster bombers. Following takeoff, Nettleton's force formed into two sections of three aircraft and headed south. Ten miles to the east, at RAF Woodhall Spa, the Lancasters of 97 Squadron headed south, with Squadron Leader John Sherwood leading his two flights of three aircraft. 
The two groups of aircraft flew to the waypoint of Selsey Bill, just east of Portsmouth, where they turned left and dropped to just 50 feet as they began to cross the English Channel. As they reached the French coast at Dives sur Mer, the diversionary operation was well underway, and so, flying under German radar, the 12 aircraft moved inland, unnoticed. As the two three aircraft formations of 44 Squadron approached Evro, they passed just to the east of the French airfield at Beaumont le Roger, which was in use by a German fighter wing. Now, unfortunately, through an error in orders issued to the Boston bombers and their escorts, the diversionary attacks had been run 40 minutes ahead of schedule. The German fighters that had been sent up to engage them were returning to base when Nettleton's aircraft passed by. Now, some 25 to 30 Messerschmitt Bf 109s and Focke-Wulf Fw 190s were sent to engage at Nettleton's formation. As the German fighters caught up, they attacked the trailing formation first. The Lancaster on the left, flown by Warrant Officer Crum, took machine gun and cannon fire, striking the cockpit's canopy, showering the pilot and his navigator with shards of perspex. The Lancaster on the right, flown by Warrant Officer Beckett, then came under fire, taking cannon strikes to the starboard wing fuel tank, resulting in a great ball of orange flame. The aircraft was soon a mass of fire and its nose tipped down. A moment later, it hit a clump of trees and disintegrated. Warrant Officer Crum's Lancaster was targeted again, wounding both the rear and mid upper gunner. The left wing fuel tank was then hit and immediately caught fire. Struggling to control the Lancaster, Warrant Officer Crum ordered the as yet to be armed bomb load to be jettisoned and then managed to belly land the crippled bomber, tearing through a wheat field before coming to a stop. The crew were badly shaken and bruised, but survived, although they were subsequently captured and held as POWs until the end of the war. The German fighters now homed in on the final aircraft of the rear formation, flown by Flight Lieutenant Sanford. A desperate pursuit took place, and in an effort to escape his pursuers, Sanford attempted to fly under some high voltage power lines. In doing so, his right wingtip hit the ground, causing the aircraft to crash in a huge explosion. All of the crew were killed in the crash. And it was now the turn of 44 Squadron's lead formation to be attacked. Flying to the right and behind Squadron Leader Nettleton's aircraft was Warrant Officer Rhodes. His Lancaster soon became engulfed in a hail of bullets and caught fire. His crippled aircraft then pitched up sharply before stalling and crashing into the ground. 44 Squadron now had just two Lancasters remaining from an original six. Just as Nettleton and Acton Flying Officer Garwell were bracing themselves for the attack, the German fighters broke off and withdrew. Whether due to lack of fuel or lack of ammunition, we don't know, but it allowed the two surviving Lancasters to escape. Meanwhile, to the south, Squadron Leader Sherwood's group of six Lancasters from 97 Squadron had slipped by unseen, and so now both groups of aircraft continued their way southeast. Passing down the west side of Paris before turning east, they continued through northern France unchallenged. The remainder of their journey took them along the northern Swiss border towards Lake Constance, before turning northeast on a course towards Munich. Shortly before Munich, at Lake Amasi, turning north, they were now staring at their target, Augsburg. The first two aircraft on scene were those of Nettleton and Garwell, arriving at rooftop height. And despite a barrage of anti-aircraft defensive fire, both aircraft stayed on course and delivered their bombs on target. As Garwell cleared the target and pulled away, his aircraft was hit in a fuel tank, causing his Lancaster to catch fire. Unable to continue flying, Garwell brought his crippled aircraft down to a crash landing. Three of his crew died in the crash landing, but Garwell and three others survived. With Nettleton now exiting the target area, Squadron Leader Sherwood led the two three aircraft formations from 97 Squadron into the attack. The plant was now marked by smoke from the initial attack, and going in at rooftop level in line astern, they released their bombs, then dropped to street level to get under the flak and out of the area. Sherwood's aircraft was hit and caught fire, but he continued to lead his formation away from the target with one wing ablaze until suddenly the aircraft became uncontrollable, dropped a wing, flew straight into the ground and exploded. Amazingly, Sherwood's seat broke free and he survived the crash, although the rest of his crew perished. The second and final formation arrived soon after. Warrant Officer Mycock's aircraft came under fire and was soon ablaze. Heroically, however, he pressed on and still managed to deliver his bombs on target, but crashed shortly after, killing all on board. Flying Officer Deverell's aircraft was also hit and set on fire, but he too released his bombs on target. Soon after, his crew managed to control the fire, but his aircraft had suffered a 10-foot gash along its fuselage. 
He formed up with the other remaining 97 squadron aircraft as darkness fell and returned to RAF Woodhull Spa. Squadron leader Nettleton's aircraft was very badly damaged and once out of enemy territory he called upon radio navigation assistance. He was considerably off course but he was directed to a safe landing at Squires Gate Aerodrome near Blackpool in northwest England. Of the 12 Lancasters that set off, only 5 had returned. 49 men were listed as missing. Operation Margin had suffered heavy losses and post-raid reconnaissance showed that although the target was hit and suffered considerable damage, production was not badly disrupted. But despite this, the raid was hailed by the Ministry of Information as a triumph and was given widespread publicity in Britain. Prime Minister Winston Churchill said, We must plainly regard the attack of the Lancasters on the U-boat engine factory at Augsburg as an outstanding achievement of the Royal Air Force. Undeterred by heavy losses at the outset, 44 and 97 squadrons pierced and struck a vital point with deadly precision in broad daylight. Prey conveyed the thanks of His Majesty's Government to the officers and men who accomplished this memorial feat of arms in which no life was lost in vain.